This video is inspired by a tweet I made at the end of July. Director, me. DP, me. Grip, me. Gaffer, the sun. <laughs> okay. Hey, welcome back to a video where I talk about a commercial we made and a run and gun commercial that didn't really require a whole team. Uh, I honestly probably could have shot this all by myself, but Mike came along to help with audio, to help with lighting, to help with hands. And this is just kind of how we run and gun shoot commercials. I definitely wouldn't be as good without Mike being there because of all the technical things he does and things we'll talk about in this video. But Braxton was there for shooting BTS and all this footage that you're seeing as I explain all this. It started out with just kind of a, a normal vlog. You gotta film this part. <laughs> Can I do a number one meal? As you can see, we packed a ton of gear to be prepared for the commercial as we normally do. Tons of lights, tons of audio, just overkill for the things we might need because there wasn't a ton of pre-production on this. It was mostly just an idea of shooting in Todd's workspace, which is his garage where he makes his camera straps, bringing lights if we need them. But I was thinking maybe we, we might not e need any lights. And that's what it ended up being because we had a sunny day and a beautiful sunset. We had talked before on the phone about how sunset always came into his garage. So it would be really vibey and cool and yeah, we went off that. Before I go any further, this video is sponsored by Clever Supply and the camera straps that Todd and his wife make. They're unbelievable. Peak design integration with a leather strap is one thing that they make and that's a really popular thing that they make. So you'll see that throughout the video. You'll see that in the commercial and their stuff is just linked in the description if you're interested in checking out camera strap with Clever Supply. And if you use the code down below in the description and the link, you can get 10% off your first order. We first got to Louisville. That's where Todd lives. We met him at a coffee shop. We talked about the game plan for the weekend and what we would be doing. Was it a weekend? It was a week. It was, it was a weekend? It was weekdays. We were planning on shooting over the course of two days. We were going to do the majority of the shooting on the first day uh, in the garage, the tactile stuff that he does to work on the straps, to cut them, to put them together, to sew them um, and finish them. And in the middle, the next day, we were going to do a Rally Caps episode, our podcast with Todd, and then finish up with any family stuff, um, you know, shooting in the backyard and just kind of playful, like playing with cameras, hanging out with the kids, uh, with his wife, that kind of stuff. So the first day before we even started shooting, uh, I had Todd in the previous days write out a voiceover that he wanted to communicate, uh, full well knowing that we would sit down and make changes as we saw fit. We wanted this commercial to be a minute in length because we didn't want it to just be this extravagant mini documentary. We wanted it to be something that was approachable uh, for people who aren't acquainted with his brand and could be consumable uh, to the, an absolute stranger who comes across it. So keeping it short and compact and interesting was the goal. So we whittled down uh, that voiceover together as we sat on his couch in his living room. I don't hear that being communicated in these words right. yet, but it will get there. Right. So we just keep fleshing that out. I think let's let's go that route but use those words that you just used we got to a point where we really couldn't figure out what we wanted to say next in the last paragraph so mike being mike and being as awesome as he is was sitting in the room listening to us struggle and said do we need to finish this voiceover right now because we can record it tomorrow and finish it tomorrow but we could get to shooting now now that it's approaching golden hour and i said yes mike Let's do that. So we got to the garage and we started to shoot. As you can see in a lot of these images, I'm using the sun as the source of light. We even looked at what it would look like to bounce a light into the ceiling in the garage and it created some fill, but to me, it just felt too flat to do that. So I ended up not using any lights at all. That's why I put that in the thumbnail of this video, natural light, because all of the lighting in this entire commercial was just the sun. I was really leaning into kind of my friend's approach, Jesse, who is in a lot of commercial filmmaking, commercial filmmaking world, is using that key light as a backlight. Danny Gewurz talks about this a lot to get that wrap around the subject and you still get this bounce off of the back of the garage to get a little bit of shadow fill on the side the camera is on, but it gives you this 
interesting lighting where it's not just flat across the subject, but gives a lot of depth. You just have to make sure that you're not blowing out the background and blowing out those highlights. And so if you expose for those highlights, it makes the image really moody and rich and interesting. You can see there's a huge discrepancy between the BTS footage and the raw footage from the C200. And now that I mentioned that, let's just break down what I was using. I had the C200 and I was shooting in raw for all of day one and the Easy Rig Mini Max to carry the camera. The Easy Rig does stabilize the footage a bit. This is a question I get a lot, but it's mostly just so that I don't have to hold the beast of a C200 rigged out. We had the We had Mike's small HD seven inch light monitor on top of the camera so I could see everything I was shooting. We had the Rode NTG4 Plus for scratch audio. I was mostly shooting on a 16 to 35 f2.8 and a 24 to 70 f2.8. C200, I was shooting raw, knowing that in post we would transcode all that footage to ProRes HQ in 1080, 422, ProRes 422 HQ 1080p and then upscaling all the footage to 4K on export. As I do with most of my work, I put a Rec 709 LUT on that footage in post and a creative LUT at about 30% opacity to get the look that you see in the final commercial. I will be breaking down more of this edit on my Patreon, so if you're interested in that, you can check out my Patreon link in the description. It's just 10 bucks a month. Now, in between shooting days, we wrapped day one as the sun dipped below the tree line. We went to Todd's house and we started to make breakfast. Todd offered that, uh, but Mike being Mike again and being good at pretty much everything it was just like hey let me handle breakfast and todd was like i'm pretty particular about my eggs and mike's like don't worry i got you i'm basically a chef <laughs> and so he started making this bomb bacon and eggs breakfast while Todd and I finished that last paragraph of the voiceover. I just can't emphasize this enough, like taking time to really craft that, to coming up with synonyms and things that you feel like, oh, that's too cheesy, let's just look through. We finally came up with that last line was something along the lines of, um, we'll enjoy the process while you enjoy the carry. So we'll continue to enjoy the process while you enjoy the carry and enjoy the carry is his tagline for his business. It's all over his website. It's all over all of his assets, like all that stuff. So it was really cool to kind of culminate this. You've seen me work. We'll enjoy this process and then you can enjoy the carry. And it was, it was a moment of Todd just being like, that's it. That's it. We got it. And it just felt so good to finalize that voiceover and go into the second day being like, all right, that's solid. So we went to the living room and I kind of coached him through that voiceover, giving him lines and having him repeat it. If I felt like it was too stale, I would say, say it again, make it more conversational, just coaching him through it, making it feel like I know how he talks. We've had plenty of conversations and, and developing this relationship. So it's like, if, if I felt like it was stagnant, I would just be honest and be brutal and just be like, no, that was too manufactured. Like say it in a normal voice. So we had plenty of takes of that to, to work from in post. And we even uh, went to the garage and had him in front of the camera say that stuff with the NTG boomed on a boom pole. I didn't end up using any of that. I do recommend shooting backups like that to have different options to choose and post. So after we did voiceovers, we did an episode of Rally Caps, which was awesome. Got to sit down and chat through his whole business. But my mistake was I didn't switch it from 1080p MP4 in the camera back to raw. But all the footage that you saw that day was all 1080 in MP4. You can't really tell a difference. The dynamic range, it's it's 8-bit color. I, I don't think there's really any distinguishable difference in the dynamic range. And you upscale it back to 4K from a 4K sensor. It's just like, you can't tell. So uh, all that stuff in the second day with the family um, and with Todd's wife, that's all shot in 1080 and upscaled to 4K, which is essentially what we're doing anyway with the RAW by upscaling the 1080 ProRes back to 4K. With all of that, you saw that we filmed those moments with the family, which was amazing. You know, the piggyback rides and uh, the kids using the cameras and just bouncing on the trampoline and all that fun stuff where it was really communicating what Todd has as the ethos and the philosophy of his business. Like, take it with you, take the strap with you, photograph your life, document your life, that whole concept. He even talks about like the philosophy of what he wants to communicate in his, in this commercial of like, if you're a wedding photographer, if you do this for work, I don't want you to see your camera on a weekend and not be inspired to pick it up, to go photograph whatever you're doing in your personal life. I want you to take it with you. And that's a line that we used as well. When you're burnt out in wedding photography, you don't want to pick up the camera as you're walking out the door or you don't want to lug it around or so on and so forth, like all that stuff. I want them to get more stoked. Like if they get our product, they're going to be most more stoked about photography. With all that said, here's the commercial in its entirety. I started as a photographer. 
I still am. When I originally picked up Leathercraft as a hobby, I fell in love with the process. I was interested in making a camera strap that motivated me to pick up my camera more. After many iterations of design, I asked what photographers wanted, and the overwhelming response was mixing existing hardware with that first leather camera strap design. So we went to the garage and got to work. Cameras weren't made to be left behind. Take it with you. We exist to serve the artists. So we'll continue to enjoy the process while you enjoy the carry. One of the biggest things I want to communicate in this video is that my philosophy with weddings and my couples uh, with weddings, it's very similar in commercial work. Serving them and being very intentional with them is one of the biggest things I care about in the commercial filmmaking world. Um, to give an experience to Todd that he's going to remember forever. Uh, now he has a commercial that he, he's going to show decades from now and be so proud of with his family and the work that he did in his garage. And there's something super special about that. And he even sent me a text showing that he teared up when he first saw uh, the commercial, which is just amazing. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about community as well. You saw how much of a pivotal role Mike was in this. Even though I had my hands on the camera the majority of the time, he was integral in the process in giving that experience. And Braxton was integral in the process of teaching and helping me teach all of this to you in this video. And even David, who came along, he's one of my patrons, he shadowed, and now we have a friend in Nashville. And shout out David. Uh, it was awesome getting to know you. It's just amazing to see all the things I've been building over uh, these years kind of culminating in a video like this, where I could do commercial work and all the skills I've um, kind of gained in weddings has brought me to this point where I can just kind of smash all these, th these things together, where I can make a commercial and make a YouTube video and have community and just all of it coming together. I'm very thankful and I don't want that to be lost um, on this video. So thank you for letting that happen and supporting me in my endeavors uh, that I'm doing here on YouTube. And lastly, I forgot to uh, mention that we did use haze. <laughs> I didn't say that, like the, the can of haze. I'll just like put a picture up here of what that is and then a link down in the description if you want it. That's what made it so like moody and cool in the garage backlit scenes. Anyway, back to other Eric. As always, if you have questions, please ask them down below. I would love to get to as many as I possibly can and help you guys out with any commercial work that you're doing. If you have any questions about Clever Supply Co., I would love to answer those as well. And I'm sure Todd will be in the comments too. That's it. I hope you're leaning into what makes you different and doing things that are cool and fun. And I love you a lot. I almost went like that. <laughs> I gotta stop like kissing people. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you put in Steve at me kissing Steve. <laughs>